Today we are doing a QMA, QMA, <laughs> a Q&A slash AMA, which stands for Ask Me Anything. I asked you on Twitter and on YouTube to leave me any questions, if you had any questions, because this is the first time that I'm doing this. So this is your chance to ask me questions. If one of your first questions is, Leela, what is going on with your setup? I don't freaking know. I don't know what's going on. Like, it is just like, ugh. I'm not a fan of it either, but as you know, I'm working on this room. I don't have a lot of stuff in here. It is very hard to make it look interesting. So this is what we'll have to deal with. <sighs> it's a lot, guys, it's a lot. Tudor Baba, if I pronounce your name correctly, asks, are you a full-time YouTuber or do you have other jobs? I am very fortunate enough to say that I am indeed a full-time YouTuber. Derek Crowder asks, at what time in your YouTube journey did you stop and think, wow, how did I get here? Every day, <laughs> honestly, every day when I, when I stop and think about what I'm doing and that this is my gig now, I just go like, what? Like, I just don't understand how I got here. Honestly, it is just insane. It is just like, I am super grateful to be in this position to be able to do this, but it's wild. <laughs> it is wild. So yeah, every day. Kevin Mushk asks, how to start doing video when having ideas, but always thinking they're not good enough or worth it. I feel that I have a lot of ideas and either during the idea process, I'm already like, yeah, it's not good enough. Or when I'm making the video, I'm just like, it's not good enough. The key here is to just fight that voice in your head and do it anyway. It's super hard. I think most of us, we have experienced imposter syndrome at some point, we're perfectionists, all of that, but you've probably heard the saying, done is better than perfect. And if you have an idea and it just doesn't seem like the perfect idea or whatever, just do it anyway. Even if you don't upload it to YouTube or wherever else, if you just make the video for yourself, you are improving improving your skills. So you may not put it on YouTube, but you will still become a better videographer or a video creator. So definitely go do it anyway. And again, I think that most of us go through it where we're just not really into it. We're not really into the videos that we make or whatever, but you just have to keep going because if you keep going, you not only get better at it, but you also get in this flow. And once you get in that flow, you'll get more ideas and those ideas will be better. So it's just basically the art of doing, I would say. All right, Christy Karekes, I'm so sorry, I'm going to be butchering all of your names, asks, how much time do you usually need to record a video tutorial for YouTube? Um, that kind of depends on how many times I screw up. Sometimes I cannot even say one sentence without screwing up, so then it takes longer, but I think on average it takes me like 45 minutes. I don't know, I, yeah, I think 45 minutes would be my average, which is still a pretty long time, but I, I just screw up a lot. Oswaldo Martinez asks, how do you organize your ideas for new videos? Do you have a notepad right on your phone or notes are Evernote? I actually use an app called Notion. Um, a lot of people have been talking about it recently. It is really great. You can customize it in any way you want. This is obviously not sponsored, but I basically just add all of my ideas to Notion and then just work them out. I just add like a script and my scripts always look like bullet points. I don't write an entire script, but I have some bullet points on there, some ideas. So that is how I organize my ideas. Jay Kane asks, how's the couch? It's still very ripped. It's still ripped and I need to fix it, but I also want to do this room. So I'm, go I'm choosing this room over that couch. Okay, Gerrit or Gerrit. I don't know how to pronounce it in Afrikaans. In Dutch, it will be Gerrit. How do you not overthink creating videos and content? I just get it done and get ideas. I want to create videos, but I get stuck on ideas or get ideas and I never create. Same with posting on social media. Feels like I'm always stuck in the content preparation phase, though I have thousands of photos to post and a few videos recorded, maybe just procrastinating. So I already kind of answered this question, but let's just touch on it a little bit more because I can relate, like especially the content preparation phase, I can plan my videos for days, 
for weeks. It's ridiculous. I can keep planning and thinking about the idea before even executing it. But I think the key here is executing it. Like you said, you already have thousands of photos and you have a few videos recorded. You already have them ready. So it's just time to post them. Honestly, it's really that simple. It is so easy to get stuck and start overthinking things. And I am honestly, I'm a professional overthinker. I overthink everything. And especially when it comes to video creation and my channel, I can get in my, into my own way. Like I get in my own way all the time. So I totally get it, but at the end of the day, you just kind of have to do it anyway, even though you think it sucks and maybe it's gonna suck. But if it sucks, you know, like I already said, you're gonna learn something from it at least. So just go post those photos and videos. And like I said before, I think the key to getting better and better ideas is to keep creating because once you get into that flow and that creative flow, there is no way you're not gonna come up with any ideas and you'll be inspired and you'll start making those videos. Janet asks, tequila or bourbon and when are you coming to LA so we can hang. The first question, neither. I don't really like to drink, to be honest. Um, if I would have to choose something, it would just be like a sweet cocktail or something or a sweet cider. Sweet is the key word here. Anything sweet I'll like, but in general, I don't really drink. And then when are you coming to LA? So I don't know, once this whole pandemic is over, I would love to come to LA again and just hang out and see a little bit more of LA. Gizmo. Gizmo is not even in the room, but he's still here. He's still like floating around. But yeah, once this pandemic is over, I would love to go to LA again. I would also love to go to Vid Summit again and hopefully stay a few more days so I can actually see LA this time and maybe we can hang. Enrico Luzi asks, what would you suggest for someone at 100 subs to pay attention to these days? Something you did that was good and something that you would do differently. I feel like I'm on the same boat as you. I'm living in Italy, but my content is in English, but I've got like zero subs from here. No one speaks English. Okay, so first of all, congratulations on reaching 100 subscribers. That is huge. I hope you grab that custom URL because that is, I was so excited about getting a custom URL. Oh my gosh, your question, I feel like there's like two questions in one. So the first thing that I wanna say is do not even worry about not having any Italian subscribers. The reason for that is that, like you said, your content is in English and they don't speak English. So you're clearly not cater catering to them. So I wouldn't worry about that at all. Something that I suggest anyone to do, regardless of whether you have 100 subscribers or 100,000 subscribers is Focus on your title and thumbnail. That is the most important thing on YouTube because if you have a sucky thumbnail or title, no one is going to click on your video. So your video doesn't matter. So the first thing that you need to do is you need to make sure that the thumbnail is so clickable that when I'm scrolling through YouTube, I see your thumbnail. I'm like, oh, wait a minute. I stop scrolling. I'm like, oh, that's interesting. And I tap on it to watch your video. And then after that, of course, viewer duration, all that stuff is very important but honestly the first thing and the thing that i would recommend you to do is really focus on your title and thumbnail pete metheson asks i would love to know how the adobe partnership came about did you approach them or did they approach you Honestly, so far, all the brands that I've worked with approached me. So including Adobe when I was like, I don't know, 14, 1500 subscribers, they reached out to me because they wanted me to be a part of their new campaign. And I was just like, are you sure? Is this, are you sure? Obviously they were sure of it. And I was a part of their campaign, which I, thoroughly enjoyed and ever since we've been working together we have a great partnership and i cannot wait to do some more projects with them in 2021. chris wickless asks what is your favorite comfort food well right now hands down it's roti and it has been roti for quite a while i just i could eat it i could eat it every day it's so good chris chris christian crinch i'm so sorry what do you think of other programs such as Final Cut and Vegas Pro? Well, I don't really have an opinion about it, to be honest, because I've never used Final Cut Pro before. And Vegas Pro, I used, I used Sony Vegas like 10 years ago, 12 years ago for like a little bit. So I don't really have an opinion about that either. And I honestly don't really think that my opinion matters anyway, because I feel like a video editing, like an NLE, like a video editing program is very subjective. Like for some people, DaVinci is great. For other people like myself, Premiere is great. So don't really go off my opinion when it comes to video editing programs, just see what works best for you. Isa Isa asks, how did you start your video editing journey? I really wanna know. 
I don't know, I just kind of started editing. I know that, that is such an unsatisfying answer, but I don't really have anything else. I just wanted to make videos, so I learned how to edit two years ago. I learned Premiere Pro, so I don't know. Oh gosh, I'm so sorry. Tim Rose asks, Hey Lila, what is your biggest challenge that you face as a growing content creator? Um, I think there is a few, but I think that one of them is getting in my own way. I like to get in my own way. I don't like that I do that, but I do it. And that means that I can overthink things and talk myself out of ideas. I can talk myself out of any idea that I have. So that is definitely one of the challenges. And then another challenge when it comes to YouTube or any other social media platform, I guess, but especially YouTube, because we get a lot of data on YouTube, is the data. Making data-driven decisions in order to grow your channel is great. It will definitely grow if you do that. But I think that it's so important to remind yourself of why, why you started in the first place, why you are on the platform, why you are on YouTube and you want to be a YouTuber, because I think that it's so easy to get so lost in all the data and just start doing whatever the data tells you as soon as it comes in as soon as you start growing that you might forget to make your soul happy or that you will find yourself at a point where you're just doing this because it works and you're growing but it doesn't make you happy and i think it's a big challenge to to both make data-driven decisions but also make your soul happy those two things don't always go together so I think that is definitely a challenge for, I think, any content creator, any growing content creator. Billy Noth, if I pronounce your name correctly, asks, what is the hardest part of vlogging for you? The hardest part for me is to start because like I said in previous answers, I know this is kind of like a recurring theme. I like to overthink my vlogs and be like, oh, I don't have anything to do. I don't have anything to say. What should I vlog about? I don't know what to vlog about. Maybe I shouldn't vlog today. But once I hit record and I start vlogging, it all just goes away. I enjoy it thoroughly, but it's just like hitting that record button when I feel like I don't have anything to share with you or to do or like have a story for you. That is definitely the hardest part of vlogging in my opinion. DJ asks, Maine Coon Cat, this is the only cat that I would ever get. Would this be too big for you? Definitely not. I actually wanted to get a Maine Coon XXL cat, but I'm actually very happy that I didn't because, you know, I'm already really bothered with Gizmo's hair. Like he's driving me crazy. So imagining having an XXL Maine Coon, I don't think I could mentally <laughs> handle that because the hair would be just too much for me, but I would love that. It's kind of like a little, like a little tiger or something in your house that would be really cool verena asks what is your favorite season i don't know <laughs> i think that every season has something charming and something less charming so i don't know how to answer that question right now it is snowing which i kind of like except for when i have to go outside or i have to use my bike then it's terrible i like the spring because of all the little lambs that are being born like all of the baby animals and all of the flowers that start growing i love the summer for the long summer nights and you know being able to be outside have a drink the good old days before the pandemic hit us. And then I like autumn because the leaves are changing and just gets a little bit moodier. So it's time for candles, time for coziness. So I definitely like that about autumn. And that is actually also something that I like about winter. The Artist's Haven asks, what is your favorite color? The first one, my favorite dessert is carrot cake, which you already knew. So what is my favorite color other than matte black? What are you doing to me, Tish? As much as I love matte black, I also kind of love burgundy and I like the warmer colors, which is interesting because my house is designed pretty cold with like blues and turquoise and stuff, but I actually really like burgundy. Remco Diedrix asks, if YouTube wasn't working out for you anymore and, or you are obligated to do something new, what would be the next thing for you, Lila? I honestly don't know. I really love this industry. So maybe if I wasn't a YouTuber myself, I would try to work for another YouTuber and be, you know, be involved in the whole creative process because what now that I'm in here, I kind of don't want to leave. So if I'm obligated to do anything else, I will try to get something as close to this as possible. Um, or else I would just really love to work with animals. That would be great as well. So I don't know, probably something like that. No, I did not forget. These are the winners of the 50,000 subscriber giveaway. Congratulations. I hope that you will enjoy your prizes. I will be DMing you in the next 24 hours. So definitely keep an eye on your inbox. And if you didn't win, I'm so sorry. I really wish that I had 50,000 prizes to give away. 
But you know, I just don't at this point. I really hope that you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for sending in your questions and I'll see you in the next one. Oh my gosh, gizmo.